Testing, one, two, testing, a little bit high there. Hey everyone, welcome back. I should say more than likely uh, to myself, welcome back because it's been a little while. Uh, I took a break for Easter, came back, uh, was able to do my video for the last end of season chest openings. Then we promptly ordered pizza after that and I promptly got uh, food poisoning. So that's why you haven't heard from me for a few days. So I'm back up and running though, trying to get back into the mix. Uh, obviously those few days I was down, I was not really playing my games. Uh, so I'm trying to get into the mix and you know, I'm, you know I, I didn't, I wanted to jump in and do a video on the new changes. But then I saw uh, Gatherings videos. He did some very good and concise videos, ran the numbers and everything. If you haven't uh, watched those videos, I would say after this live stream, go over to Gatherings channel and watch the two videos that he did on the recent updates because he, he spelled out the numbers and he kind of laid it out. Um, so I felt less inclined to hurry myself up and make a video because he already had a couple good videos out there. I wanted to sit back and kind of take it in. Um, I think at this point, I mean, you're seeing my screen right now and you're seeing that my account, uh, which is, I haven't beefed it up too much. I have level six rare, or yeah, level six rare summoners and I have level three um, of the, uh, sorry, um, legendary summoner, sorry, it was it escaped me. Um, and that's what I'm playing. I'm playing at pretty much a max level gold level deck. And uh, since the changes, my account has been in diamond two and then into diamond one. And you see that at right now, um, my glint is at about 10,000. I figured it out yesterday, kind of extrapolated it out, and I would have enough at the end, not counting end of season, I would have enough to buy 10 elite draws, okay? So I understand the fact that people are saying, well, you've got to take into effect that the old chests uh, just a, a much smaller percentage, like 25 to 30 percent of the chests, maybe, were cards. That's fine, but this, um, the reduction in daily chests and season-ending chests, it's just, it's just a huge reduction. So I think to sum up my feelings, and I'm not going overboard here, and I'm not diving in, and I'm not jumping on the bandwagon, and and kind of, uh, uh, you know, starting a fire here. Um, but I feel, and he, and Matt stated in uh, Discord several days ago, it's been several days since he made a comment, but he stated that they're looking at the numbers and they're going to look at the best way to adjust it. Obviously, there's a couple ways to adjust it here. Either, in my opinion, the level of the glint that you earn per match needs to go up or the cost of the draws needs to go down. Either way, that's my opinion right off. And like I said, that's not taking a real in-depth look, and that's not even factoring in the fact that uh, once you go over the, the 10 chests, then it costs you exponentially more to go ahead and buy more chests. Um, I don't think that's going to be an issue for me. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the comments, see what everybody's saying. Supreme Victory Studios, thank you for stopping by. Uh, says, I'm ready for the entertainment. Yeah, we should see some interesting opinions today because I've seen both sides of the equation, you know, going on in Discord. And I'm trying to stay, you know, um, optimistic, which is hard for me because I'm a pessimistic person uh, by nature. But I'm trying to stay optimistic. But overall, um, starting out, my winnings, in, and I've said this before, every major change in the game has resulted in me making less, okay? Am I still optimistic for the game? Yeah, I'm hopefully optimistic. I've got a lot of money into it. Not as much as uh, some of you out there, right? Uh, I am happy to say that finally I am above 50,000 SPS staked, which was, uh, which was a short-term goal of mine, which I've been pressing for over the last month or two. But SPS is down, so that's kind of a double-sided blade right there so uh we'll see 
Gathering says, good morning. Welcome back. Hope you had a great Easter. Yeah, our Easter went pretty well. Uh, we went over to uh, my mom-in-law's house, and we had several days there and then came back uh, across the state. It was about a six-hour drive. Everything went well. Uh, it was as expected. If you know family gatherings, uh, you know, it's not all you know great you know so uh but everything went well uh thanks for the wish uh gathering says where's the glint only six per bronze two win for my third account not even playing my ten dollar account because i don't want to lose my 30k glint if my rating drops good point and that's another angle we're going to have to look at it um i think you had said this before uh that um uh, la a week before last that there's going to be a certain point that possibly it's not worth playing anymore um, you get to a certain point and you want to stay at that level do I cut off uh, you know for your season end loot once again and you know if memory serves me correct this is a point where we were uh, this is a couple changes ago where we were still getting chess but there was something in effect that once you got to a certain point, you wanted to stop and stay there. And then something changed. Sorry, memory isn't serving me right. And then we got into effect of everybody kept pushing, right? And then now we're back in the same boat, right? Who knows? Uh, we'll see. But yeah, my uh, the last season of chess, my, uh, my lower end account, which plays with silver level summoners that's the best way i can say uh level four rare summoners um it drew hardly any chess uh on a daily basis because for some reason uh level four rare summoners were able to push into diamond one uh two and uh three and two don't tell me why, or please tell me why uh silver level summoner deck uh, with just my extra cards is pushing into diamond in wild. I don't know. Uh, it shouldn't do that. But because it did, it earned hardly no daily chests. And I don't even know, did anybody get any SPS in their end of season rewards this last season? Uh, I watched a few different uh, people who do videos uh, on the matter and I didn't see any SPS pulled. Uh, I know I didn't, and I had uh, 40 or 45 diamond chests. No SPS. Okay, so rant off. Uh, sorry if I got kind of ranty. Uh, Gathering says, guaranteed 71 plus cards for that account. Thanks. KGM's in the house. Are you out on the road uh, today? Thanks for dropping by and listening. Uh, he says, hello, Bronze Dragon. Uh, glad to see you back. Love the new system. Uh, well, there's one person that's loving the new system. Stuck on my Untamed pack this morning. Struck out. Okay, I did not watch your video this morning because my Saturday mornings are kind of full. I try to get my videos in in the afternoon on Saturdays because I'm doing chores to get ready for this video, but I will watch. Um, yeah, um, you know, on the system as a whole, I want to be clear. I kind of like the idea of having a store, but um, as I told my brother, we were discussing this the other day because he, he texted me. He's like, um, man, I really miss opening chess. The one thing I looked forward to on a daily basis was getting home and open those chests, right? Obviously, we didn't like, I, I did like opening chess. I didn't like the high frequency of potions I got. I think that's my one thing I didn't like out of the chess season uh, system, that is. Um, I didn't like the high frequency of potions. And uh, on that matter, I want to highlight, not to take away, uh, uh, I want to highlight something Gathering brought up in one of his videos, in his first video on this matter, is the fact that it looks to be, let's go over here to the shop, when you're using potions, Unless you're using elite or master draws, you should turn your potions off because by the numbers, and you can check out his videos, by the numbers, it doesn't really make sense to waste potions on initiate, adept, or veteran draws. I just wanted to point that out, and that fact, uh, that, uh, fact goes to uh, gathering. That's his. Uh... So uh, Wibble says, we welcome... Wibbles in the house. Uh, Gathering says uh, they all, sorry, they will probably raise the glint rewards per battle after a season or two. They will tweak it. Will you save? Uh, 
Will I save for a title? That's interesting. Um, I've been thinking about it, and these titles are huge numbers, okay? Um, you know, going back, let's go back, you know, just looking at the numbers, if I can stay around this, it would be approximately nine seasons, uh, eight, approximately eight to nine seasons for me to save up maybe eight, conservatively nine seasons for me to save up for just the low-end title. I don't know if that's going to be worth it. Obviously, there would be a value there by slapping that on one of my lands, right? Especially one of the better ones, right? Um, that still uh, remains. I haven't thought about that. Frankly, I've been giving more thought into which veteran draw or which draws I'm going for. I haven't really considered... Um, I'm, I'm thinking about sticking with the elites, right? Um, I think by your numbers on the video you did, I would probably go with elites and then just fill out the rest as needed. But I did the numbers and I'm only going to be able to get like 10 elites and maybe one veteran draw in a season, maybe two. Um, so I'm not overall worried about that. And then they reset at the end of the season. So... Uh, I think everybody's given uh, a lot of thought of it. I, I can tell you, I did give some thought about whether I wanted to go with merits and start filling in those uh, cards, right? Um, I definitely am not going to be using them on potions for any time soon. I do, I'm not an energy user, so um, it's interesting. Um, I, I'm thinking that the titles might be good if we get down the road and I've everybody's filled in. I, I can foresee that. Everybody gets to a certain point and everybody's filled in their decks, right? Um, and then at a certain point, everybody just starts saving up for the glint. But once again, or saving up for the um, the titles, rather. Um, but once again, um, they also said they're going to be cycling these out. So who knows what's going to come in. It would be nice if they put special cards in. He talked about... Uh, having precise cards available for larger amounts of money say you need x card you can go in and pay for that it might you know it might cost a fair amount but you know exactly which card you're buying right so we'll see but i haven't put a whole lot of thought into buying the titles uh that's direct answer for that um yeah, gathering uh, reinforces what I just said. Turn those potions off unless you go to the top two chests. Um, don't waste them. Uh, yeah, he, he did his numbers, and the percentage chance that you're getting off the, lo the three lower end, the initiate, adept, and veteran, are so minute that it's not even worth using um, potions to double your chance because you're you, it's just still minute even after doubling your chance. That's the main point here. Um, let me see. Uh, Alex Toro is in the house. Says you need 100k SPS staked at least. Well, uh, I'm I'm rolling in, but like I said, uh, going back to when SPS first became the mechanism for earning, um, I'm at more than five times what I had then. So I feel pretty good about what I'm doing. Um, and I'm just doing it uh, on a weekly basis. I'm not going in whole hog, and I feel like I've done the dollar cost averaging type of thing over um, the last few weeks. So I feel good, um, and with what I have coming in and land, it all just keeps rolling in, you know what I mean? So I feel good, and I, I'm not, I just don't want to ever be at that spot where I soak in a bunch of money, and then the next day I feel bad about it because SPS is, T tanked right uh, it's continued to go down but it, like we all know any crypto uh, it, it can just on the drop of a hat go up so um, like I said I'm cautiously optimistic that's why I'm continuing to put money into the game um, but I would I would be lying to you if over the last week I didn't think to myself where are we at where have these changes brought us you know I'm earning less money you know I would be lying to you if I didn't say that I had those thoughts. Um, so there's that. Um, let's see where we're at. Uh, Gathering says no SPS in the last end of ch chess, and KGM said he didn't get any either. 
Uh, Untamed packs have some very valuable cards in them. I agree. And I'll tell you what, I was looking at Untamed because I've been looking at, uh, you know me, dragon cards. Um, but there's a, a lot of cards in Untamed that are, um, you don't see a lot that are, to me, that's cool, right? Let's just go to core, reward, and promo, right? And of course, I have dragon. Uh, Let's just look at dragons, you know. A lot of these you just don't even see because I was specifically looking at dragon legendaries because that's what I'm trying to beef up my deck on. Why? Ah, why not? Why do we do any of this, right? Um, but some of this, like, cool, like Dragon Jumper. When's the last time you saw that? Um, I bought a diamond dragon a uh, week before last. When's the last time you saw that? And it's got slow. I mean, it's a pretty decent card. Uh, my bot doesn't play it much in wild, but look at this, you know, uh, at level three, it's got flying, it's got slow, it's got cleanse, it's got last stand. I mean, that's a great card to me in the right uh, setup, right? So uh, let's go back to market. But I guess my point is there's a lot of, um, let's just take off that, a lot of cards you don't see played frequently, and that's just dragon, right? So let's go to epic, you know? So, I mean, we could talk about this. My main point is there's a lot of cards you don't see uh, played a lot, and there's a lot of strong cards. This is just going off of KGM's um statement about there uh, basically being a lot of uh, cool and strong cards in uh, this set, right? So, um, okay, so uh, Wibble says lots more cards in end of season chess, but no SPS. That's another person. Like I said, I didn't see anybody get any, um, any SPS out of their end of season chess. This is a cool card. When's the last time you've seen it? a light elemental played? Sorry if I'm getting off on a tangent here, but like I said, I could play this at level five or six. At level, at max level, it gets blind, it gets headwinds, and it gets flying. Sorry if I'm beating the point into the ground, but um, basically my point was I got into looking at the dragons and I started looking through all the rest of these, you know, epics and legendaries. And I'm like. When's the last time you saw this? You know, th these would fit into some really good situations um, with uh, how the games moved along today. Um, let's see here. Um, Gathering says, uh, will the soulbound cards be super rare when they are unlockable? Tons of them have already been burnt for glint for titles. Well, uh, I had that thought whenever I was burning my uh, some of my gold foil cards for SPS the other day, uh, or DEC the other day. Um, those people who did choose to keep their cards and go into the future, it's just basically a long-range bet, right? Uh, some of us, uh, like I did... Uh, uh, burn off some of my gold foil cards, uh, wanted to take in a little bit because I didn't see actually, you know, going forward, there's a lot to look at. It's just a gamble, right? You're gambling that we get to a point where they unlock the cards, right? And then after that, you have to pay a fee. There's going to be a fee. And looking at the fees that have come in up to this point, it's been pretty decent fee that you're going to have to pay to unlock that card. And then you're going to have to take that card and sell it on the market, which is going to go for whatever the going rate is going to have to go up by whatever it pay. You have to pay to unlock that card just by standard rules of economics, right? So it's either wait and take that bet or just take your DEC now or whatever. So it's all a gamble. It's all a bet, right? Uh, let's see here. KGM says the nice thing about the store is that you can add and subtract things as needed. I agree. I like the store idea. I think it's not quite there. I think the what we earn off of. Um, let's go back to the store. Uh, I think either once again, I think the glint we earn has to go up or the cost of the things in the shop has to go down. One of the two. I think that and I agree with them. I agree with their fact that, or their point of starting low. You can go in and when you make a major change, you're gonna to want to start low and then adjust higher. 
it's easier to do that with people than to start high and adjust low because if you do that then you're gonna I mean they've already made a certain portion of people angry um, like I said any big change you make you're not gonna make everybody happy right so I like the idea of a store I'd be lying if I said that I didn't miss uh, opening the chests um, just from the randomality of it the gambling type loot chest type uh, idea um, but I think once the numbers get adjusted this will be a, a lot easier to swallow um, but to me I think the major problem I'm having is explaining to myself why um, my accounts are 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 hitting so high in diamond you know uh, I've never been this high before you know so Either way, let's go ahead and check what chat has to say. Um, Gathering says the titles that have been claimed up uh, are probably mostly from burning gold foil epics and gold foil legendaries. Won't be any, many of those left for sale when you're able to sell them. I agree. Uh, I need to run the numbers on merits. People may want to build back up the gladiator collection. Yeah, I had um, opened, I wanted to do a video but it was the night before I was traveling on the Tuesday, which the change are happening. So I had like 16 packs, uh, Gladiator packs to open. So I'm like, I want to do a video and open the packs, but I just was sitting in a hotel room and I couldn't do it. Um, so I went ahead and opened them. I only got two common gold foils. I went ahead and burnt them, got an extra uh, thousand DEC. Um, but um, the... The gladiator cards are very strong when you're using them um, correctly. <laughs> Let me say that. The difference between a lot of brawls is using gladiator cards. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. I plan on putting a certain amount of my glint into actually improving my gladiator cards uh, where, uh, where I can. So. Uh, Gathering says, I think that we'll add new titles, skins, and maybe a limited edition promo card in the Glint store. Yeah, those are all good ideas. Uh, I don't know about the skins. They've talked about that before and said that that is a significant um, amount of labor. And I agree. Uh, that is one of the things that they can. You know, tons and tons of games out there online um, make huge amounts of money off of graphics which is skins for this skins for that just look at the various games you can buy skins for your gun your camo everything and people pay hand over fist for these skins um, and in this game in Splinterlands there's actually you can use you can use the the they actually draw you can make off of them right so in other games they're just graphics to me I never buy just graphical things like say you know, they used to have the skins where you could buy for your card sets and everything. I never bought any of those. Um, but it is a possibility. Um, and it would be nice. I mean, if there's a particular card uh, uh, that you really use a lot, then maybe you might want to buy a skin for it. Um, especially if you're able to stake that skin on something or other and uh, make a little extra with it. So... Uh, with me, if I'm going to be using Glint, it's going to have to be improving my deck or helping me out on my land or something like that, right? KGM says, that was a great video you did on the numbers uh, at Gathering. Yep, I mentioned that earlier. Go check those out if you haven't. He ran the numbers. Uh, Supreme Victory Studio says, my four-year-old was very dis disappointed to find out there was no longer a daily chest for him to open. Yeah, um, a lot of us uh, look forward to opening those chests, right? Like I said on my last chest opening video, um, it'll be the last end of season chest in the opening video. You know, going forward, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I might save up and then just buy a bunch of draws and do a video. I don't know at this point. I don't know if it's even worth it at this point. Uh, I don't know how many people are interested in that, but uh, maybe people are interested in um, my strategy on improving my deck. That's where this channel started out with. Maybe I'll go with that, but who knows? Um, let's see here. Uh, KGM says, uh, 
On the crops, oh, uh, on D-crops, are you playing the three-year anniversary and checking in early and claiming it? If so, just claim the 300 gas. Can imagine I have no idea what that is to do, uh, do you? Uh, yeah, the gas is to run certain of the appliances when you're cooking. Let's jump over here to D-crops for a minute. Um, so what he's talking about is in D-crops, they're having a three-year anniversary uh, countdown and leading up to this, um, yeah, I did my claim, which was yesterday. I'm still waiting on my uh, next claim. Um, I missed the first a, a few claims, and this is because, um, let me point this out if anybody's playing it, you need to have your crop on Hive Engine to be able to use it because each claim costs 30 crop. I was claiming, and I was thinking I was getting it, but I wasn't really getting it. So that's my mistake, but I did get the 300 gas. So yeah, uh, the gas is used on certain cooking appliances. When you get around to cooking foods, uh, you need gas to run your different things. I can't tell you which exactly appliances, because I don't know, um, but you will see if you look under um, crafting or workshop one of the two some of the appliances you go to cook they take gas to cook with so and as you can see i have my crops i do need to buy another land fertile land and i am enjoying my new apple tree it claims five apples per day which are pretty high value uh so i've been selling off uh all my one star fruits and then saving up my two and three star fruits as they build up uh, towards my, uh, basically staking. If you save your fruits and just hold them in your inventory, they level up your staking amount, basically. So um, I did put this in a few of my videos and I probably will talk about it in the future. Um, but once you get to a certain uh, amount of in-game items, which you hold, to a certain amount, then you um, start earning Hive, right? So that's my goal. Uh, I think 20,000. So let's see here, where are we at? Uh, I keys in the house. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you happen to be in the world. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Alex T says, total market probability gonna drop this and next month before it bounces back. Uh, Wibble says gas is for cooking and crafting and decrops. I just, yeah. Uh, Gathering says Mylor for $2. Wow, that's amazing. Picked one up today. I never had one before. That's interesting. Um, yeah, Mylor is very strong as far as I know in um, bronze and silver. Um, I don't know about higher level. Um, I, Of course, my fault is that I do not have him at higher level. I think I only have a one BCX. Actually, I think I have him on my uh, secondary account. Let's look at summoners. Yeah, he's on my secondary account uh, just because he's just a one BCX. Um, let's clear this off and go to summoners. Where is, and he is Earth. He's under two bucks. Look at that. Just looking at the prices, you can get a level four for 50 bucks. Good point out. Yeah, he's very strong as far as I know in bronze and silver. Uh, shield bearer under a dollar. International Travel Channel's in the house, Guten Tag. Welcome, thanks for dropping by. Last Hope, new name in the house. Thanks for dropping by, I appreciate it. My rewards have gone up. More SPS per battle and I can use the glint to buy more energy to get more SPS. I think that outweighs getting less uh, reward cards. You know, um, I had thought about that and I had look and looked at the numbers. Let's just look at my last win here and just skip to results. I had looked at my last numbers yesterday and they're fluctuating all over the place. I'm in diamond two and I don't necessarily have a reason why because my winnings go from anywhere from, okay, so let's jump, step back for a minute. Um, before the change, I was earning about 0.6 to 0.8, uh, 0.6 to 0.7 um, per battle. 
So right now, after the change, I'm making um, anywhere from, once again, 0.6 to 1.8, and it, it fluctuates wildly. Um, so maybe you could say I'm making basically double but, um, you know, the numbers have not come in yet as far as if me making, you know, double per battle, which is basically, you know, 24 per day, um, is worth losing the chess. Uh, obviously, the chess were all random, right? Uh, I haven't really kept strict numbers on what I've been earning, but I do know over the last few months I have got a few big chess, right? Uh, and I kind of counted on those to bring up my value or my uh, what I've earned, right? Um, also, the fact of the matter is, since I'm using Archmage, um, it used to not, uh, Archmage did not draw off of end of, end of season chess, which was a good thing. But Archmage takes off of every single battle. So the more I'm winning uh, per battle, the more I'm paying to Archmage. Of course, you could say, well... Um, you know, you could just play in modern. Uh, yes, I could and beat my head against the wall for half the day. Um, but um, I'm just pointing out that those persons using Archmage or Xbot are now paying more uh, due to this change. I pointed that out in a video. So either way, we'll see as time goes along. Um, let's see here. Uh, International Travel Channel says, does anyone know if the end of season glint rewards adds modern and wild rating or is it just the highest rating in one of the formats um last hope says highest rating good i did not have an answer for that so good uh alex t says i've never been this high before uh yeah uh yeah we won't go out there with that um let's see here kgm says uh it's a good time to max out cards at these prices i would agree uh, one of my other points I wanted to talk about was the cards I've been seeing um, in not only Splinterlands, but also Splinter Forge. If you play Splinter Forge, the prices have, are really attractive now. I boosted several of my cards in Splinter Forge last night, right? Um, or, or several of my uh, equipment items, right? Um, so however you look, uh, you know, that both games are in various stages, but it's just... Um, let me say that when times are in flux, depending upon which side of the opinion you're on, you can either be selling or taking advantage of those who are selling. <laughs> and if you're fully behind the game, like KGM says, now's the time to uh, boost your cards. Uh, not investment advice, right? But if you're a card player and you, you've had your eyes on a few few cards that you've been looking at boosting over time, um, you know, the cards more than likely, the prices have more than likely come down. So take a look if you are not, a uh, you know, you don't commonly look at the cards, you know, so card prices. Um, <clears throat> Gathering says, have you checked out Splinter Royale? Looks interesting. I looked at the intro video for it. And frankly, I'm at a point right now, not for or against the game, but I'm at a, a max game like limit right now. I'm playing so many games. I've got a new game that I've been playing consistently for the last two weeks. Um, it's not on the high blockchain, but it is on uh, several different blockchain connections. And I'm trying to give it a good full test before I do a video on it. But that with all the rest of my games I'm playing, I'm at a max limit uh, of games, so I have not tried it out. Uh, I watched a few videos, people explaining it. Uh, one of the uh, subscribers to my channel did a video, of, I'm forgetting who it was, I'm sorry, um, did a video on it, and uh, I watched, and it still looked very confusing. It looked, uh, yeah, I would have to watch it and read through the rules a couple times before I would understand it. But it looked like a totally different take on Splinterlands using Splinterlands cards. Um, but I have not tried it out. Alex T says not feeling it, but didn't get, didn't even give it a chance. Uh, KGM, uh, yes, improving your equity in the game should be your top priority. Uh, like I said, it, it's all 
just how you feel about how things are going. You know, I've talked to a few people this week that have been completely um, just not feeling the new changes and completely let down by the team. You know, I'm not I'm not saying for or against. I've I've heard both. Obviously, you still have the people on one side that are always tooting the horn, got a, a lot of big money in the game that are always on the bandwagon. And then you got people that are maybe being real and just saying, you know, like this week, I, I, I was trying to consider everything the effects on my play, right? And basically making less out of the game, etc. You know, um, so I, I don't have an answer for you. Like I said, I wanted to give it some time to sink in. I wanted them to be able to see he's already made the statement that they're in an adjustment period. They're taking in da data sets and they're going to make their uh, changes based on those. So I'm looking forward to it. As we know, all big changes take time to settle in and take adjustments. And like I said, it's easier to start out low and adjust higher than it is to start out high and take things away from people, right? So, uh, Last Hope says, it's good that reward cards aren't that cheap, especially when uh, uh, Chaos Legion goes out of modern. You don't want cheap reward cards again when the main set costs four to five bucks per pack. That's a good point. Um, but I don't think we'll ever get to the point where we were with Chaos Legion just to do just due to how Chaos Legion was done and how the reward cards were done. Um, <clears throat> although, I gotta say, Jin O'Shaughness is still one of my favorite cards in the game. Shout out to Jin O. Um, I bought him when he was 25 bucks. <laughs> so, um, let's see here. Uh, let's see, Last Hope also says, I think the pricing in this shop is much better than people give it credit for. Well, like I said, uh, comparatively speaking to what I drew last season, which was about five to six diamond chests a day, plus 45 chests at the end of season, um, I'll be able to make, you know, about 10 diamond chests plus whatever my end of season gets, you know. So, you know, like I said, it's still in flux, right? So I think... In my opinion, I'll give them, I'm not going to make any harsh, you know, maneuvers. I'm still looking at the cards I want to buy and everything. So I'm not, I, I'm not, you know, there's always going to be those people that go out on a limb or go way to the left or way to the right and, oh, the world's burning and everything. Um, I, I am concerned that SPS continues to go down. Um, let's take a look at it. Let's see here. Let's go on to the next comment. Um. Elliot is here. Welcome. Thanks for dropping by. At what point does the team take away Brawl SPS? It seems like the next logical step since they seem to be reducing earnings on every front. Well, that's a good question because the SPS is the real reason I do Brawls, right? We, we can see SPS is down to uh, 173. Uh, you know, it's just continued to go down over the last month or so. Um, yeah, DEC is down slightly. I mean, we were holding there for a long time at, you know, 90 to a dollar. And now uh, we're down in both accounts. It uh, looks like pretty much everything is down. You know, I'm not one of those people that watches the crypto on a daily basis, you know, like your stock watchers. So I'm not, I can't uh, express my opinion on this. I know that I've seen a lot of comments in Discord about people unhappy. People, it's clear that you can see people are uh, selling off stuff. So if you're really into the game for the long haul, uh, the prices are right right now. So I'm just trying to check up on chat. Uh, but back to Elliot's point, yeah, I they would have to really, if they took SPS out of brawls, they would really have to introduce a strong reason for continuing to do brawls. Really? Because, and that would have to include some way of making actual money. Because some of us actually have to rent out cards to commit to some of our brawls. I don't do that a lot, but I, I'm in uh, my secondary accounts and KGMs 
uh, guild, and I took a gold foil brawl this time just to help out the guild, right? Um, because I was sick and the rest of the, the slots were filled, um, but I had to rent out some gold foils, right? And that cost some money. A lot of money? No. But I'm, my point is, if, if we're actually having to spend money to fill these brawls, we should expect to get some money back if, you know, if we perform well in them. So, okay, let's continue. Uh, Gathering says, I don't think they can since that is in the white paper. Interesting. And that would be good, something good to look at. Uh, I might bring that, look at that in a video. Uh, VT Mac Guru's in the house. Thanks for dropping by. My lore was one of the first cards I bought when I got into the game. Remember, it cost me almost 50 bucks. Yeah, I remember back in the day, that was one of the strong go-to cards when I first started. Uh, I had to choose between him and, uh, who's the blue guy? I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. And Alric. I had to choose between him and Alric, and I went with Alric uh, just due to money spending because at the time they were, uh, for me, you know what? I think that, um, I don't know. I can't remember what the price was back then, but uh, I chose Alric because uh, Blue Deck was really strong at that point in time, and I was playing in bronze and silver. Um, Jason Jenkins, uh, welcome. Thanks for dropping by. Anyone know what grain liquidity pools LAN 1.6 are coming out? I thought they said it was uh, almost ready a couple months back. Uh, you would be right. They did say that uh, towards the beginning of last month. And no, I don't know when um, they're going to come out. Uh, we were told soon. Uh, we were also told they were in the testing process. Um, we are also told that they were going to put it out to uh, the, what do they call that, the heavy investor guys uh, to on their server to look at uh, first to test, um, but haven't heard anything since then. Last hope, probably I wasn't there in the beginning, but started watching from the start. Still want to put this out there. Ghostly BG's in the house. Welcome. Thanks for dropping by. I get between 15 and 20 SPS per win in D1 Modern. Well, I'm glad. That's great. I, You know, I, I'm not against it. I, I say, hey, if you're a good player and you have a strong deck and you've put money, you've put a lot of money into your deck and you can play it well in Modern, you deserve to get that extra money, that extra SPS, right? I'm not against that. But me, I know myself. I know the condition of my deck, and I know that I don't have a maxed out deck, and I know that if I switched over modern, I would be frustrated and probably not able to make it into gold. And then I would be frustrated, right? Um, so that's where I stand. Is it impossible for me to do that? No, I mean, down the road, they make changes to the game. I change and I adapt, right? I may go into modern, um, but at this point, I don't see myself doing that. Uh, I did take a look at the numbers. Um, the numbers of games played in modern has stayed pretty well in the same average. The games in wild, though, played on a daily basis have went way up since the change. Um, let's go over to Peak Monsters. This is my secondary account, but we can still go to my Explorer and Dashboard. And you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but I looked at the numbers, and they the numbers of uh, modern play uh, battles have stayed consistent about uh, 15 to 18,000 per, per day, whereas the the numbers in wild have went up since the change. So take from that what you will. I don't know what to say about it. Um, I can just report what I'm making and what I'm making is about one SPS per win average, um, maybe a little bit more, 1.1 SPS per win in wild uh, at diamond two or um, 3300 rating. So that's all I can say. Uh, Alex T says, buy max cards and rent them out. Um, my ratings, uh, you know what? That's another good point. Um, 
my rentals have went up slightly, but they've also fluctuated out, uh, fluctuated around a lot. Um, I don't have a lot of cards for rent, but I have noticed that the prices, uh, what they're making have gone up. But it's a much different market now. I fully believe I agree with his statement is that if you're going to want to rent out cards, you need to buy at max level now. Okay, people want to buy a rent max level cards, and that's what's going to rent out, you know. So, I'm not saying that as of right now, that's uh, as far as my take on it is a good investment because they're still only getting very minute amounts of DEC per day. But if you get in the situation where you're just, you know, uh, had it with the game for a while, you could just rent everything out, right? Um, or at least rent out your max level cards. What I have rented out is pretty much what I have max level extras for, you know, so good point though. Um, Last Hope says, I get uh, around 10 in gold one, uh, 11 5X multiplier. Um, yeah, that's another thing to take into a point, your, your boost, right? Uh, the more SPS you have, you know, another effect of this big changeover was it's the change has pushed people to buy more BCX of cards, which is what obviously the game wanted. And it's also pushed people to need to invest more SPS. And that's frankly one of the offsides of my secondary account. The reason why it's not drawing hardly anything is because it's a silver level account Some for some reason in Diamond and it has like like one or two boost, you know, which it's getting nothing. Um, so that's had me, you know, wondering what I'm going to do with the secondary account. Is it even worth having a secondary account anymore, right? So all questions still up in the air. Uh, Last Hope says, uh, and I can buy energy and play many additional games, okay? So what's land, Alex T says? SPS is going to keep going down. I'm probably going to buy in between... Uh, one and point uh, zero uh, point zero one and point zero one five. So um, gathering says, "Wow, what's land to what's land?" Uh, you know, to his point, uh, I've been claiming, you know, on a daily or every other daily basis. I haven't really done anything else with my land. Um, I've been keeping check, uh, you know, once in a while I've, I've been watching uh, KGM's videos and stuff and um, so there is some land that is going for, let's go over, uh, it'll be easier to look at on Peak Monsters. Um, let's go to land market. You can see there's some land that's as low as $21. But um, in my particular areas, the, the land is still um, pretty high priced, right? So, um, you know, there is what it is, you know, and like back to one of my original points on land is the fact that the cost of the land, unless you buy one of the higher tier lands, the cost of the land is not necessarily the cost because <laughs> you've got so much else that goes into that. Although with the cost of cards coming down a little bit, uh, I think the gold foils are still staying up because a lot of people have burnt them and bought them for land and stuff. But the regular foils, uh, you know, might be tempting. But I haven't put anything else into land lately. I still have my 12 plots. They're fully staked out. I did improve the the totem to a rare totem on my one plot to, to bring my food up a little, my grain up a little bit. But um, let's see. Uh, rarely here is th uh, is here. Thanks for being here, rarely here. I may uh, just get more SPS. Why, while it, why it is this while it is this low? I would just stake it for more return. And that's what I've been doing. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't buy any this week because, um, yeah, been sick, etc. cetera. But uh, like I said, I have gotten to my 50,000, which I'm slowly uh, leveling up. Um, but that was my goal. Paul Taylor's in the house. Thanks for dropping by. Only a Dow vote can change SPS inflation. SPS and brawls isn't going anywhere. Good point. Uh, and I would, uh, I think I will look at that in the uh, white paper, but Paul is right. Anything involving SPS will have to go through a Dow vote as far as I know. Uh, KGM says, I've been a gamer since the 80s. Me too. Same boat. And Web3 gaming is my new hobby that might or might not bring me profit. At the end of the day, as long as I'm having fun, I will continue to do this. I agree. I agree. I just don't want to. 
everybody's different, right? I just don't want to go in such a huge amount. I'm not, I'm the type to dollar cost average. I'm not the type to go in with one big bulk, right? Because the big bulk is make or break. You either win really big or you lose the really big. So I've been, like I said, dollar cost averaging over the years and it is what it is. Everybody's got a different uh, point. <laughs> Alex T says, nah, need that profit at all costs. Uh, rarely here says at KGM, fully agree with you. When you, when the real gamers who play for the fun start adopting Web3 games, the market will explode, I think. Yeah, um, that's something we've on and off talked about, right? Um, that's the tipping point, really. It's it's getting major games or a major gaming studio in on Web3 in order to, it's, it's just the advertising, right? And it's convincing people that Web3 is just the future of gaming. I mean, KGM has said this a number of times. I think we've all talked about this a number of times that, that do videos, is that it's hard to go back to a traditional game when you're used to Web3 games where you can actually make something off of it, right? Um, and a lot of people shell out tons and tons of money to these games for skins and things like that, um, that they can never recoup that money, right? It's just all sent. And if, the, if that game shuts down, that money's gone, right? But, you know, in hindsight, if, if Splinterland shuts down, this is all gone too, right? So who knows? It's all a gamble. Alex T says, don't, don't need it, but mentally needs it. <laughs> Gathering the Magic says, as part of your daily DCA, you may want to look at picking up Goldfoil Beta or Goldfoil Untamed Common Cards. Goldfoil Beta start at level four, not three. Good point. I need a drink. Before time gets too long here, let's look at uh, the what dragon cards are available. No, not going gold foil. I just want to look at legendary and dragon. What, what's everybody's opinion on void dragon? I have one BCX on this. I also I have proper level of these chaos, carnage, desert, Simul. Um, I only have a 1 BCX of Robo Dragon Knight. I leveled up my Diamond Dragon last time. What's everybody's opinion on Void Dragon? I'm thinking that this is what I'm going to level up this time around. Um, let's go ahead and catch up with videos. Um, yeah, Supreme Victory Studio says it was his video. You're right. Uh, he did the, uh, did the video I was referencing earlier. Um, KGM says, make it more valuable in wild and earn more than modern and the bots will stay in wild. Yeah, I, I really, you know, this, this is a big topic. I, I really think we're, we're moving towards the complete elimination of bots. But I almost think that's almost impossible from where the team started was very pro-bot, right? So it's, it's a huge conversation. We could talk a whole hour just about that. Uh, Last Hope says, you should try modern. The days of max decks in bronze and silver is probably over. I see the new system already shaking out. I see more and more unmaxed decks in gold, so might want to try it. Good point. It's always worth a try. I agree. Uh, I might do that. Uh, it will always be worth having a second account if you can bot it, says Alex T. Last Hope says, yep. I have four bots in diamond, always good returns. And Gathering says, good deals on magical plots. We'll need one of each for producing the magical food. Yeah, but then again, um, when you get into the talk about producing magical foods, um, there's a lot more to think about that when you look at the flow chart as far as what you need to actually create the magical food. So we don't really have time to go into this, but I have covered that in past videos. I think you have too. Um, but there's several other plots of land, and it's kind of expensive if you're going to go and try to be um, produce your own foods. Now, if you're saying, well, I just want to produce the magical items to be able to um, sell off to people to produce the magical foods, 
then that's another question. But um, yeah. Alex T says bots should be gold plus. Alex uh, also says magic plots $35 now. <clears throat> Rarely here says $20 was original price without discounts. $21 is not bad price. I even saw an epic land for under $100. I told myself I'd go heavy on land if they dropped below $20. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but like I said, it's not just the land price. It's everything else that goes into it, uh, especially when we get into 2.0 and all the other costs involved. Um, let's see here. Alex T says, I'm going to have to try uh, taking Tails food from him. <laughs> Uh, rare magic plots for $52. That is very tempting. What area though? You need to make sure you can buy plots to support that one plot. I agree. We've talked about this. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of other prices, especially I've done a video on this. I probably should do another one. You got to look at the prices, the costs that are going to be absorbed when we hit 2.0 to keep everything, to get it, to build the new buildings and get everything up and running because you have to be prepared for that as well too. So of course, if you're just buying the land to like keep it for future value, that's another that's another discussion, right? International Travel Channel says, is it possible to put cards on land that are delegated to that account? I'm trying to think through that question. I don't think so, but I would have to look at that. Um, have to take a look at that. Um, Gathering says Void Dragon is great in Magic only, and Alex T agrees. Okay, well, let's see how many BCX. I think that's my card for this week. I think I only have one BCX of it. We are coming up on time here. It's been a very nice discussion today. I thank everybody for dropping by. So, yeah, I only have one BCX of it. So I will need five more. So let's go over here. Look at Void Dragon. I need... F hmm. Here's six VCX for a buck a piece. Five BCX. Yeah, it's, it's cheaper just to buy this, this one at six BCX. And I will have, oh, <laughs> I'm on the wrong account. I was like, why don't I have enough money? <sighs> Cheaper to buy this one. Okay, not exciting, but I feel safe that I've, I've seen Void Dragon used enough to know that it, it should be used by my bot, and it makes a good addition to my um, deck. Um, for next week, I'm really strongly thinking about Robo Dragon Knight. Who uses Robo Dragon Knight a lot? Just uh, We only have a few minutes left, but uh, it's, it appears to be a pretty strong card. So now I have a level three. Maybe I can send this level one uh, Void Dragon over my secondary account. <clears throat> yeah, it was pretty cheap. I just got a level three Void Dragon for six bucks, if anybody's wondering. And the other ones below that weren't too much more. Uh, Alex T says, I don't know, Jangles was talking about reverting the bot band. Oh, oh, really? I hadn't heard about that. Um, International Travel Channel says Void Dragon is awesome, especially in speed manipulation plays. Well, thanks for that tip. Um, that makes me wonder. I gotta look at it now. Five speed, it is pretty fast. Need to load up on time crystals too when 2.0 comes out, yeah. There's a lot of things. You got to look at the numbers. There's a lot of things we got to load up on for 2.0. Uh, 
Uh, cheap land in areas is uh, I'm not heavy in. I, I use just to produce grain. I can just sell it then. Um, yeah, uh, that's a good point uh, as well as you just got to keep an eye on um, the transportation costs and taxes and stuff. Alex B says, hi, thanks for dropping by. Um, level three void dragon is awesome with phase. Yep, just picked it up. Hopefully, uh, yeah, I feel pretty, I, I, I've seen it used enough to know that it's a pretty decent card. So, uh, and a good price, uh, six bucks for a level three. Can't beat it, right? Well, I guess you could, but uh, the rest of them are just more expensive. Uh, you can't pull delegated cards in land yet. Uh, you can't put delegated cards in land yet. Um, I believe they are looking into this. Yeah, I think I remember that as well, too. Thanks. Um, Rally here says, I, I saved my time crystals for the most part for the land packs as I figured they would need them later. Uh, save them for actually uh, buildings you will want to put to get a jump start when 2.0 goes live in 2027. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, Alex T says, why don't you buy from the monster market? They give you DEC back. Uh, I don't know. I've always just used peak monsters and got the peak uh, PKM token back and then sold my PKM token. So uh, it would be interesting to see a comparison, which draws more. Uh, getting the what you back get back off of the monster market uh, versus what you get back off peak monsters with the PKM token. Um, Last Hope agrees. Uh, says Monster Card Store gives you best cash back. Maybe worth a look uh, from your opinion. Then I'll take a look. Um, uh, maybe worth a video, a short comparison there. Uh, rarely here says 10,000 uh, crystals in my main account. <laughs> That uh, will get you started. Um, <laughs> not 2.0 going live in 2027. Uh, Alex B says under one dollar and sixty cents for uh, TD packs, and Alex B says 2028. Uh, Last Hope says 80 percent if you use your own referral link. Nice. Uh, I'll have to check it out. Uh, but thanks for the heads up. So we're at the bottom of the hour. I wanted to say thanks for everybody to stopping back in, for stopping back in. Um, as we get everything kicked back off, um, as I get more news and I get this, uh, get into this new system more, I'm going to take a look at it um, and do a few videos on it. Like I said, I didn't want to jump out there and just kind of, you know, start fires and stuff like that. I wanted to get some numbers under, and I would like to see what they announce they're going to do as far as the changes go. You know, um, because it, it, to me, it's obvious that things need to be adjusted. It's just to see what they do with that, though. But uh, thanks for dropping by. I would appreciate it if you hit that like and the subscribe button if you haven't. And I appreciate everybody uh, for, you know, checking out my videos on a daily basis. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, so I hope everyone out there is uh, their family and everybody's uh, starting off uh, the spring happy and healthy or spring where I'm at. Uh, and I will see you on the flip side.